Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're located. My name is Lynette Roach. I'm the Media Relations Director for Black Health Matters, and I'm introducing the session on Know the Signs of Cardiovascular Disease. Cardiovascular diseases remain the leading cause of global deaths and a major cause of health loss in all regions of the world. About 29% of all deaths in the United States are caused by some form of cardiovascular disease. And while these statistics are shocking, the numbers related to cardiovascular disease in the African-American community are staggering. The rates of cardiovascular disease for African-Americans are 20% higher for heart disease and 40% higher for stroke compared to rates in whites. In fact, the age-adjusted mortality rates for heart disease and stroke remain highest in African-American men and women among all race and ethnic groups in the US. Compounding this disease burden are the pervasive disparities in access to high quality cardiovascular healthcare experienced by African-Americans and other underserved racial and ethnic minorities. Luckily, early intervention can help us recognize and treat any signs and symptoms of cardiovascular disease. I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Delano R. Small, MD, FACC, Chief of Cardiology. Dr. Delano R. Small is a fellow of the American College of Cardiology and Chief of the Division of Cardiology at Ascension Providence Hospital in Southfield, Michigan and Novi, Michigan. Dr. Small is an Associate Clinical Professor of Medicine at Wayne State University and is in private practice in the Southeast Michigan area where he practices general and interventional cardiology. He is involved in fellowship and medical programs that teach upcoming medical students, residents, and cardiovascular fellows. I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Delano R. Small. Thank you, Lynette. Can you hear me? Thank you. It's my pleasure to be a part of this session today. And uh, as Lynette said, uh, we'll be talking about cardiovascular disease, its risk factors, the facts around it. And uh, I'm gonna share some of this information with you today and uh, we'll see. Can you see my slides? I think you can see my slides. Um, so we'll be talking about the facts and the signs of cardiovascular disease and how it affects our community in general and how it affects the African-Americans uh, uh, community. What is cardiovascular disease? Uh, first of all, we have to know the definition as to what is the disease itself. And when we talk about cardiovascular disease, we're talking about uh, essentially, second, disease of the heart and the blood vessels in the body uh, throughout the circulatory system. So a lot of the time when we talk about heart disease or cardiovascular disease, we use a number of different terminologies. We talk about heart disease, we talk about heart attacks, strokes, high blood pressure, all of these are categorized into what is known as cardiovascular disease. And as my next slide would show, the red lines are the arterial cardiovascular system or the circulatory system as it's known. And disease can not only affect the heart, but if it affects any of these vessels throughout the arm, the abdomen, the kidneys, the legs, the uh, brain, it's a form of cardiovascular disease. And it is a major form of uh, mortality and morbidity in the United States. Cardiovascular disease, as this statement reads, is the number one killer for all Americans but even more frightening as that statistic is, the risk of getting this disease is even higher for the African-American population, as Lynette just pointed out. 
we have a 20 to 40% more higher risk of having cardiovascular disease and the mortality is staggering among the African-American population. So when we talk about cardiovascular disease, what are we talking about? We're talking about coronary heart disease, the type that can produce heart attacks. We're talking about cerebrovascular disease, the vessels that go to the brain that when they get clogged can produce a stroke or a mini stroke that some people know it as or a transient ischemic attack, a TIA. High blood pressure is a form of cardiovascular disease, congestive heart failure. There are some forms of cardiovascular disease that are congenital. In other words, you're born with it. And those are different and those can be addressed also, but that is a different topic. Peripheral vascular disease is also a form of cardiovascular disease. So we know that heart disease is the still the leading cause of death for men, women, and people of most racial and ethnic groups in the US. One person dies every 36 seconds in the United States from some form of cardiovascular disease. There is at least a good 655,000 Americans that die from heart disease each year. That is an average of one death, one in every four deaths. But the percentage of African Americans that die from all causes of this disease, as you'll see on my next slide, it is significantly higher. And we will get into what can we do about this and some of the signs that we can that we see that will be able to help us. As this slide indicates, high blood pressure at any age group, 18 to 34, the percentage of African Americans with uh, high blood pressure is higher than our counterparts, Caucasians, by a good 2%. In other uh, age groups, such as the 35 to 49, this becomes even higher hypertension in our population becomes even higher, higher, 33% versus 22%, and in ages 50 to 64 years of age, it's staggeringly high, 61% versus 41%. The same thing is true of diabetes in all age groups. And notice in the group from 50 to uh, and over, 23% uh, diabetics in African Americans versus 14% in Caucasian. The other fact is that African Americans are more likely to die at early ages from all causes of cardiovascular disease. Ages 18 to 34 are uh, significantly higher, ages 35 to 49. It gets higher, and as we approach our middle life, 50 and higher, the mortality is even the causes of death in the African American society from uh, cardiovascular disease become even much higher. This is the same data presented in a different form. And as you can see, by age, race, ethnicity, uh, the percentage of high blood pressure in those groups, as I just told you, they're significantly higher in African-Americans, young African-Americans, 12% versus 10%, 35 to 49 uh, years of age, 33% versus 22 and 50 to 64% in, in, in ages 50 to 64, 
in the African American uh, society, we have a higher incidence of high blood pressure, 64 to 41 percent in the white population. Diabetes, the numbers are virtually equally the same. As we grow older in any age group, there is a significantly higher incidence of diabetes in the African American population. Deaths per 100,000, again, you can see here, still in that same uh, category of age group. For every 100,000 people, in the age of 18 to 34, all causes of cardiovascular deaths, you will have 142 African Americans versus 100 whites. Ages 35 to 49, it jumps significantly to 312 African American deaths per 100,000 to 220. And at the ages of 50 to 64, the number of deaths per 100,000 African Americans versus whites is 1,000 close to 50 versus 722. So the question is, what can be done? What are the facts? How can this be made? Can we decrease this incidence of cardiovascular disease in our community? And the answer is you can, and you will see is yes, because it's not all doom and gloom and doom. There are things that we can do as a community that will help us decrease the rate of the risk factors that causes this disease and decrease the incidence of it. So when we talk about the risk factors of cardiovascular disease, there's a number of risk factors that stand out and they're, they're glaring, they are things that we can do to decrease the incidence of this disease. Smoking is a big player in cardiovascular disease. Hypertension or high blood pressure plays a major role and as we have said, it's the prevalence in the African-American population is very high. Diabetes also is very high and it's one of the risk factors. High cholesterol, overweight also plays a major risk factor in developing cardiovascular disease. Inactivity, as we will talk about, plays also a major role. One of the other factors is family history. And some may say, well, family history, we can't do anything about that, but I will show you that, yes, we can do something about that, even though there may be genetic reasons why this occurs. So let's start by trying to, uh, drill down on each and every one of these risk factors. Smoking is toxic to the vessels or the circulatory system and can damage every organ in our bodies. Some say, well, smokeless tobacco may be safe, but it's not safe. It's equally as damaging, such as snuff or chew or dip, whatever, else other nicotine that uh, you may ingest or smoke. Is electronic cigarettes better and vapes? No, it, uh, not because it's high tech, mean that uh, it's better for the body and the vessels will not respond to the nicotine that's in there. And in addition to the nicotine, there are many harmful chemicals that are placed in this contraption, this nic in the nicotine that you smoke, uh, that also damages the vessels of the heart or of the circulatory system. Secondhand smoke is equally as damaging. 
I would say that if you can smell the smoke from cigarettes or nicotine, then you are too close and secondhand smoke can also be damaging to your circulatory system. Next, let's turn our attention to hypertension, which is one of the other risk factors. Hypertension is very, very, very prevalent in the African-American community. And it is known as the silent killer. The reason that it's known as the silent killer is because it produces damage before you are aware or have any symptoms that may guide you to the fact that you have high blood pressure. We as a population, we have a significantly higher incidence than any other population in the entire world. The highest incidence is among African Americans. The blood pressure, when you go to your doctor, it's usually broken down into two numbers, 140 over 60, 140 over 90. What does that mean? Well, the systolic blood pressure is the pressure that the heart pumps out the blood into the vessels and it's the pressure on the vessels on the arterial system when the heart contracts. So it may be 140. And when the heart relaxes, there's also a pressure and it could be 60, 90, whatever the number is, it's usually lower, but it's produced during relaxation of the heart. But the higher the number, the more pressure it puts on the arterial system of the, or the circulatory system, and that can damage the circulatory system and lead to drugs, heart attacks, uh, congestive heart failure, and many other cardiovascular risks as we see it on a daily basis. High blood pressure is defined as a systolic blood pressure greater than or equal to 140, that's the top number, or a diastolic pressure greater than or equal to 90. So getting to know your numbers as to what your blood pressure is, is important. And uh, at any age, uh, younger adults, midlife, and even older, Blood pressure is important, and if you fail to take care of it at a very young age, it will produce damage to a number of the organs in the body. The other risk factors that's very risk factor that is very prevalent in the African American community is diabetes. Diabetes is a condition that causes blood sugar to rise to very dangerous levels. Untreated diabetes can seriously damage many organs in the body, lead into heart disease, lead to stroke, lead to kidney disease, dialysis, that's one of the ones that I haven't talked too much about as yet, but our incidence of kidney disease is significantly higher in, the, in our community than in any other racial or ethnic group in the country. And we're about 20 times higher to go on dialysis. And this is usually mediated by high blood pressure and diabetes. So diabetes and high blood pressure, are very important risk factors. In diabetes, the body has problems either using or making hormone called insulin. When the body does not have enough insulin or does not respond to insulin, it causes too much sugar to build up in your blood, which can cause damage to your heart, and other organs in your body. So the control of diabetes is very important or not becoming diabetic is also uh, something that we can do. Um, 
disease risk factors uh, of diabetes that diabetes can produce is uh, heart disease, stroke, high blood pressure, high da uh, damage to your eyes, your blindness, kidney damage, foot damage can also lead to amputation and hearing loss. Cholesterol is a very waxy substance also that's a risk factor. And if your cholesterol is not controlled, it too can damage uh, vessels in the brain, the heart, and uh, other organs and lead to major uh, problems in the future. So what are some of the factors that lead or contributes to diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol? We know that weight, overweight and obesity contributes significantly to this problem. But we know that as your body grows and changes, gaining some weight is okay, but gaining too much weight can be dangerous to your health. Being overweight or obese can be dangerous for your health and it increases the risk of health problems. And we know that. Overweight can lead and obesity can lead to diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure. If, you, if you're gaining weight, what that means is that you probably took in too many calories, more than your body needed. And those extra calories are stored as fat. The reason I say uh, that it probably means that you have consumed too much calories is because some people who exercise on a regular basis may gain muscle, but that is muscle weight, not fat weight. So what can we do to help this? Physical inactivity is something that causes a lot of the problems that we see. It can lead to diabetes. Uh, by exercising, we can control diabetes, we can control blood pressure. So the recommendation is regular physical activity helps to keep your heart, muscle, bones, and joints healthy and strong. It can also make you feel better, helps you to sleep better in the evening. The recommendation from the American Heart, American College of Cardiology is at least 30 to 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical exercise most days, if not every day. And when we say activity, it could be bike riding, swimming, brisk walking. You don't have to jog. Just walking can do it. Tennis, gardening, jogging, soccer, aerobics, dancing, jumping rope. All of this, all of these things will help you to, to keep your weight intact and keep you healthy. What else can we do? We can eat plenty of fruits and vegetables, choose whole grain, whole wheat bread, oatmeal, brown rice. Oily fish is recommended such as salmon, trout, herring, at least twice a week and limit the intake of saturated and trans fat. Limit the amount of red meat you eat and choose skinless poultry. And also decrease the use of sugary drinks and drink more water. One of the last risk factors that I wanted to touch on was family history. You can do something about it. You have to know your family history first though. You see your primary care physician and depending if they find that you have high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, you can make lifestyle changes early. Healthy diet and exercise, which is you know, is very important. In summary, I would say avoid smoking and using tobacco products, be physically active every day, eat a healthy diet, keep a healthy weight, 
Find out if you have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, or family history of heart disease. The warning signs of heart attacks. I know that most of you uh, know the warning signs of heart attacks, but it's usually an uncomfortable feeling in the chest. It can go down to the arms, the back, the jaw, produce shortness of breath, cold sweats, or lightheadedness. Uh, the warning signs of strokes is usually numbness or weakness in the face, arm, legs, especially on one side of the body, sudden confusion, trouble speaking, understanding, blurry vision, loss of balance, and sometimes even a sudden and severe headache. So those are some of the facts. Those are some of the signs that we can see. And uh, it's a lifestyle change that if we pursue, we can decrease the risk of cardiovascular disease in our community. With that, I'm going to stop and entertain any questions. Okay, so here we go. We have some questions, Q&A. Dr. Small, you have two more minutes. Okay, I where is my Q&A? Here is my Q&A here. Okay, Allison from Chicago. How come Black Americans die at higher rates of all causes than do non-Hispanic white Americans? It has to do with the risk factors, more diabetes, uh, more high cholesterol, more, frankly, overweight and obesity in our community. And all of these things combined can lead to higher incidence than we see in Hispanic. Uh, but even the Hispanic population has a higher incidence than our white population, non-Hispanic. Jerry, uh, is it possible to have an onset of high blood pressure and diabetes in the 70s? Is there much thing or press? Yes, certain age being less susceptible? No, high blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol can show up at any age. You could have been fine all your life, and one day you go to your doctor's office or you check your blood pressure at home, and you see that your blood pressure is elevated. If it is, you know, there may be secondary causes of high blood pressure, but it needs to be treated. Yet from an anonymous source here, how can I prevent diabetes without Eat, uh, okay, but I am still borderline diabetic. Diabetic, diabetes can be prevented usually by watching what you eat, trying to maintain a healthy weight, exercising. We see that patients who undergo bariatric surgery, their diabetes go away. And we're talking about type 2 diabetes that usually goes away. Uh, but there are some people that are slim and they still have diabetes and it may have to be with how much insulin they're producing or the quality of the insulin that they're producing. Esther Walker here, are there any studies which show the correlation between people's diet in African-American and Caribbean countries and blood pressure? hypertension versus African-American. You know, it's interesting that even, you know, when you compare African-Americans in the US and the Caribbean, the incidence of high blood pressure is still significant uh, in Blacks, no matter where you come from. And the diet, I think, is very similar. And that can be a contributing factor, but there is most likely a genetic factor also that makes us more 
prone to have diabetes, but we know that you know, high salt diet can also influence diabetes in our community. Uh, with that, I think those are the questions that were there. And uh, I hope that you were able to hear my session. Hello. Oh, I do have 10 more minutes, okay? So let me see if there's any other questions I can answer here. Uh, from Terry Smith, regarding family history, what do you recommend for adults who have adopted and don't, that have been adopted and don't have birth family history? I'm adopted and I feel that I have to be a check for everything. Yes, it's, you know, you don't know your family history and that's understandable, but I think a trip to your primary care physician uh, with those concerns, they will do the necessary uh, testing and it's usually a blood pressure or a blood test that you know, will guide them as to whether or not you have high cholesterol, that you are prone to diabetes, that your blood pressure is high, and uh, what needs to be done, uh, and what can be done. And you can be guided by that type of uh, encounter with your primary care, for this, uh, primary care physician from, uh, can diabetes and kidney disease be reversed? Diabetes can be controlled so that there is less of a chance of developing kidney disease. And kidney disease can be controlled by controlling blood pressure and diabetes. Diabetes by itself can cause kidney disease. High blood pressure by itself can cause kidney disease. Cholesterol by itself can cause kidney disease. So if you have a combination of high blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, all three of them together, then the propensity to having kidney disease is significantly higher. But if it's control, your diabetes is controlled, your blood pressure is controlled, your cholesterol is controlled, we can decrease the incidence of going on to going on dialysis. So a lot of it is left up to the patient to control these things so that there will be a less likelihood of developing kidney disease. And now next question.